little ticked over asking her for her license. And she didn't have to give him her license. She was in her home. He's standing pretty close. Situational awareness. She said, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. And that man lost his shit. I will say it with until I turn blue in the face. And literally her in cold blood. He says, huh? She says, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. This sets him off. He goes off at being rebuked. I believe this wholehearted. Better effing not, or I swear to God, I will shoot you in the effing face. They were irritated going up to her door. This was an innocent woman. Okay, I could hear it in their voice asking her for her ID. He saw her put the pot down. He keeps saying, drop the pot, drop the pot, drop the pot. This guy should have never been in law enforcement and he deserves to be in prison for the rest of his life. Yeah, she's still breathing, but she's losing a lot of blood. No remorse, nothing. Sonia Massey's family is on a mission, and they're not backing down until they get justice. They've got their sights set on new legislation to prevent tragedies like Sonia's from happening again. Here's the deal. On July 6th, Sonia Massey, an unarmed woman, was tragically shot in the face by police officer Sean Grayson after she called 911 about a possible prowler. Grayson, who had a sketchy past including a discharge from the Army for serious misconduct and two DUI charges in Illinois, one in 2015 and another in 2016, should have raised some red flags. He got slapped with fines totaling over $3,700 for his DUIs. Antonio Romanucci, the family's attorney, is pushing for a national database that tracks such misconduct. He wants this registry to include everything from DUIs to excessive force, so future employers know exactly what they're dealing with before hiring cops. Yes, sir. You killed the wrong black woman this time. Amen. Amen. He should have never had a badge. He should have never had a gun. He should have never been given the opportunity to kill my child. This man had two convictions for DUI. He had a conviction for driving under the influence. Knowing what you know now, was it a mistake to hire Sean Grayson? We were satisfied that he could work as a police officer in Illinois. I'm not gonna speculate as to what, what we should have done with hindsight. It seemed like a good hire. I'm asking, based on what you know now, was it a good hire? That, that's speculation. I have an application that's three pages long. Some have a extensive background investigation. I've never seen someone pass with two DUIs. Case is a clear uh, example of someone who should not have been hired. We need a national database for police misconduct. Everything from speeding during a chase to using excessive force, Romanucci said. We're not saying a past mistake should automatically disqualify someone, but it should be a major red flag. He's also advocating for a mandatory waiting period, like 45 days, before a new hire can start, giving time for a thorough background check. If a department hires someone despite red flags, the higher-ups who signed off on them should be held accountable. It's their job to ensure background checks are done properly, Romanucci said. If there are infractions and they still hire the person, then the responsibility falls on them. So Sonia Massey's family is fighting to make sure no more officers slip through the cracks and to get the accountability and transparency needed to protect everyone. How we are all not on the same page with what we've seen on that body cam. We don't have time to think when shit pop off. So again, you could never, you would never. Put the badge on and let me see you do it. It shoots you in the face. It is murder. He was scared for her life. What happened to Sonia Massey never would have happened to her if she would have been a white woman. Suspicious history. From May 2022 until late April 2023, Sean Grayson served as a sheriff's deputy in Logan County, just north of Springfield. His role included duties at the county jail, where in December 2022, a female inmate filed a serious grievance against him. The complaint, Uncovered through a public records request, detailed troubling behavior. The inmate, Chelsea Lowe, reported that during her arrest, she disclosed to officers that she had drugs hidden inside her body. According to the grievance, Grayson instructed her to remove the drugs in his presence. 
she recounted feeling immense fear and pressure to comply with his demand. Lowe's ordeal didn't end there. As she was taken to the hospital, she was left exposed in a hospital bed when Grayson allegedly yanked back the curtain, exposing her to him and reportedly to other male officers. I felt deeply violated on both occasions, Lowe wrote, struggling with how to address the situation. In June 2015, Alexia Grayson, now known as Alexia K. Pitchford, took a decisive step to end her marriage with Sean P. Grayson, filing for divorce in the Circuit Court of Macapin County, the very county where Grayson had briefly served as a police officer in 2021. Pitchford's petition cited extreme and repeated acts of mental cruelty from Grayson, describing behavior she felt was without cause or provocation. The couple had no children together, as noted in the court documents. The judge granted Pitchford the right to revert to her maiden name. Just two months after the divorce filing in August 2015, Grayson's legal troubles began with his first DUI, followed by a second DUI in July 2016, according to court records from Macapin County. The state's attorney made the charges, so this is, this is for my own safety. Hopefully it'll be out tomorrow. I can't imagine that they're not going to release me. They're saying my charges are first-degree murder, agonized yeah. with their weapon, and uh, fish misconduct. They said this is for my own safety to put me in custody, so. So there I am. That's what the state's attorney agreed, or that's what the state's attorney made the charges, so. No, well, this whole new city yet. Mm -hmm. That's why hopefully I'll be out tomorrow. Sheriff is the person who hired uh, Deputy Sean Grayson and has admitted that there were flaws in his hiring process. Uh, he said, despite the efforts that he was working on in the community, some want me to pay the price for the person's actions, referring to Deputy Sean Grayson. But I'm curious how many other deputies have we hired that we did not do any due diligence in the background on. Strangers feel a connection. Even though Lisa Clanton didn't personally know Sonia Massey, she felt a deep connection to her after Massey was tragically executed. This incident has ignited a nationwide outcry for racial justice. Sean Grayson, the deputy involved, has been fired and charged with first degree. The local sheriff, Jack Campbell, retired after the incident, albeit unwillingly, and there's growing pressure in Illinois for a thorough investigation into Massey's demise. At a memorial service held at Pleasant Grove Baptist Church in Springfield, where about 100 people gathered, Clanton shared how she saw a reflection of herself in Massey's story. We're black women, Clanton said, addressing the crowd. She called for help, but instead of receiving help, she lost her life to someone who was supposed to protect and serve. The service also featured civil rights attorney Ben Crump, who's representing the Massey family. Massey's mother, Donna Massey, and her children, Jeanette Summer Massey and Malachi Hill Massey, were there too. Coincidentally, the service was held on the 116th anniversary of the Springfield Race Riot, a tragic event in the city's history. Clanton, 46, spoke about how the church and her faith connected her to Massey, whom she referred to as my sister in Christ. She shared that Massey's final words to Grayson, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus, reflected her attempt to confront what she saw as an evil presence. In a powerful move, President Joe Biden announced plans to use the Antiquities Act to designate the riot site as a national monument. At the memorial, Sante Massey, Sonia's cousin, noted their family's connection to William Donegan, a prominent black citizen who was brutally slayed during the riot. Crump urged Springfield to stand up for Massey and echoed the call for action, quoting Martin Luther King Jr. and stressing the importance of doing what's right. We have to speak truth to power, Crump declared, it is the right thing to do to stand up for Sonia Massey. After the service, Pleasant Grove's pastor, Reverend William Deshaun Rosser, rated the evening a perfect 10 out of 10, praising the choir's uplifting performance and Crump's impactful speech. Clanton highlighted how Massey's demise has united the Springfield community, with rallies and gatherings supporting the family. She gave her life, Clanton said, hopefully to push us toward reform from police practices to transparency in hiring. She said she was going to rebuke me in the name of Jesus and came out with blowing water. That's what all this is. I was standing right here. All right. Any damn suspect? Me. <laughs> oh, uh, I didn't yeah. know what happened. <clears throat> yeah, I'm good. Fucking just crazy. Uh, he's got tape. I, I think I got a roll. The blood is on the hands of the system as well as Sean Grayson. That's what we got to do. That's the reality. 
Madam Speaker, on July 6, Sonia Massey dialed 911 seeking safety. Like everyone who has seen the body camera footage on her final moments, I am shocked. But instead of receiving help, she met with fatal gunfire from an officer of the law, demanding justice and accountability. This was an appalling act of senseless violence that strikes at the core of our humanity. We must confront and end the use of excessive force against unarmed people of color in this country. Sonia Massey should be alive today. Sonia Massey called the police for help and they took her life instead. When we said defund the police, we meant just that because Sonia Massey should still be here. We said defund the police because the police are literally functioning the way they are supposed to. Walls matter more than black women's lives do. Dad's cries haunt Arizona. Sonia Massey's brutal demise will not leave our minds for a long time to come. Neither will this next case we're telling you about all the way from Tucson, Arizona. A gut-wrenching video has surfaced showing Robert Marino, the devastated father of Zariah Marino, weeping as his daughter's body was wheeled away for organ donation. Zariah, 22, tragically lost her life after a violent altercation with her boyfriend, Angelito Adrian Olivas. On Wednesday, Robert was seen crying and hunched over Zariah's body at Banner University Healthcare Hospital in Tucson, Arizona, after life support was removed. The heartbroken father and his family said a final goodbye as Zariah was taken away, just three years after losing her twin brother in a motorcycle accident. We've lost our twins, and it's going to be dark moving forward, but we'll push through just like our daughter would have wanted, Marino said. Despite the pain, he found some solace in knowing that Zariah's organs would help others. It's wonderful to know that parts of my baby will live on, he said, but there's no way to make this better. According to the Pima County Sheriff's Department, Zariah suffered severe injuries on Monday after an argument with her boyfriend. Reports say she jumped on the trunk of Oliva's car as he tried to drive off. He continued driving and Zariah fell off at some point, leading to her critical injuries. Oliva's, 25, has been slapped with various charges including felony DV, aggravated assault and felony endangerment. He was released later the same day after posting a $2,500 bond, which Robert found shocking. It almost seemed like a joke, he said, expressing his disappointment with the legal system. Robert remembered his daughter as a resilient and passionate young woman who thrived in the Reserve Officers Training Corps program. Despite the immense grief, he was moved by the community support during an honor walk at the hospital. I thought it would just be family and friends. The support we received was beyond anything I could have imagined, he said.